he was a terrific writer on that there. They really found some remarkable people to write scripts for us. And everybody, it was during a time when everybody wanted to work on that show. Artists wanted to work on the show. Actors wanted to work on the show. Writers, musicians, everybody. And then Shirley Walker, we didn't even talk about Shirley oh, Walker as a composer. Every really villain important. had their own theme. And it was so. But the other thing Andre has a really good, you know, actors, people kind of lump us all in a big room together, a big ball blob together. Actors are just as diverse as people. There are generous actors and selfish actors, kind actors and nasty actors. Ones you really want to work with and ones you just run away from. You think, please God, don't make me work with this person. <laughs> people, they are people. And Andrea, I learned right away that the bookings were a very kind of safe zone. I felt very comfortable to go in there and explore experiment because everybody was so generous. The thing I love about working with Lauren and and and, and Diane and, and especially Mark Hamill was I know they want me to be good. They're not looking at me in a competitive way because they know the better I am, the better they'll be because I'll give them more. Mark, I watch him watch other actors. He he has a very childlike quality about him. And he he looks like a little kid enjoying the first movie he's ever seen when he watches an actor really hitting a home run. It's, it's a wonderful thing to watch. And, and I sense him giving me that energy when I'm working with him. And that was your casting. There were no bad apples in, the, in any of those shows. It was, I've, it was I've everyone often, was wonderful. I've often likened casting to putting together a group of people for a party. Who's gonna have fun together? Who's gonna bring something to the party? You know, not just take, but but give. And and so and you know, who do I want to spend four hours in a room with? You know, a closed-in room with just a bunch of us together. And so if I can put together a good party, I can put together a good cast. And so that's kind of the mentality I with have. One that. famous exception. <laughs> not gonna mention names. We waited and we waited and we waited. Half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour. Andre said, "Fine, come on. We're just gonna we're gonna record the show, and uh, we'll we'll deal with her later." <laughs> an hour and a half in, we're happy with the show. She comes breezing in and says, "Oh, breezing in," and says, "Oh, sorry, I just couldn't get out of the house today." <laughs> I know, I know. I thought you're not gonna. Andre kept over me really that. quietly and whispered in my ear, "Couldn't you?" <laughs> never saw her again. No, no, no. <laughs> Another episode everybody loved, and it's actually a board game now. I haven't played it. It's called Almost Got Him, where everyone tells their favorite Almost got it. Wait, what? Kevin, you were actually impersonating Killer Croc, and then, of course, the, uh, the ruse ends. I'm curious. Batman trained in Japan as a samurai, and then he also learned some magic from Zatanna's father. Kevin, are you any good in a fight, and do you know any tricks? You know, I am good in a fight, but it's just because I'm so vile. <laughs> I don't have any skills, but I will tear your head off. <laughs> I'm really not artful. I, I'm not artful as a fighter, but man, do I have passion. You know? um, but uh, that's the extent of my when was the last time you got into a fight? <laughs> Come on. Well, Sister Josephine Marie. <laughs> she had it coming. Yeah, last week I was in a bar fight. Maybe let me tell you where the nun. So I'm curious, uh, Diane, with talk of legalization of marijuana across the country, how do you think Poison Ivy would feel about that? <laughs> What a wonderful and absolutely upsetting question. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're on the same thing. I personally think it's just fine, uh, but poison ivy? Let me see, plants being used to get people high. Hmm. I think she would like the hemp part because you can make baskets and purses out of hemp. I don't know, you know something? I have no idea. If I was given a script or she had a particular reaction, I would play that and I hope 
Right, really, really? <laughs> Absolutely. But no, I really have no opinion. Anybody else? <laughs> so I'm curious if part of your contract was that you had to wear some sort of utility belt, like day in, day out in your real life, what would you keep on that for Kevin and Lauren? What would be on your daily utility belt? Wow, he's really stayed up nights no, no. to make these questions happen. <laughs> <For> you, <though. laughs> what would you what would you put on there? Lozenges. Car <laughs> keys, wallet, money clip. I like to do carpentry, so I guess a really good skill saw. <laughs> I come at you with my skills. <laughs> and then, I know a lot of people would like to see you guys reprise these roles. Uh, you guys did the Nerdist podcast, right? That was for Justice League. Is there any chance that maybe we could see something from Warner Brothers next? What, uh, a Justice League robot? Or everybody with Batman in, in the DC Oh, universe. we would love that. We would love, love that. Nice yeah. 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 yeah! They didn't stop making the shows because there wasn't a desire for the shows. The audience never lost demand for the shows. It was just the writers moved on. They wanted to do different things. Um, the actors all wanted to do more. Uh, the audience certainly wanted more. They just wanted, the writers wanted to move on a new project. And, and I think that if it were to be done again, there would be an entirely new set of writers because people who were fans of the show as children are now old enough to be writers. And so that's probably where the writing staff would come from, is from kid, people who were kids when the show was first on, because it was 27 years old. Yeah. And you know, we did, we did a, a semi-reunion uh, with this movie, Batman and Harley Quinn, right. and uh, I, I have uh, things set up where I get Google alerts if, there, if anybody mentions anything on a blog or whatever it is. And there was, I mean, literally hundreds of people, and this is just the ones that I saw, of people saying, I'm so happy to hear you and Kevin together again, over and over and over again. And I was like, gosh, I wonder if anybody at Warner Brothers is reading that, because you know, and Diane, Diane has the same voice. We have the same voices, obviously. And so we would, we would love, love, love to do this show again. Yeah, I get say, lots of angry stuff on Facebook. Why aren't you still doing the voice? And I said, well, they moved on because that's what you learn to say as an actor. But the bottom line is, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I think okay, they want give more names because that's kind of the trend. You know, somebody's famous or something else. So let's get this little known voice actress, me, who simply made a living but was never a star. Let's get her out of the way and get somebody else. That's one possibility. The bottom line is I can do the character in my sleep right now. It's, we don't really, I mean, until we come in all the way, we don't really change. Well, Jude Foray worked until she was 90 years old. Exactly. And the voice of Rocket exactly. J Squirrel and Natasha. And we were just talking about it before. And Granny. You know, how many people from the show don't are still around and that. still working and still could do it. You know, there's so, so many of us we love to. It will take fan notice to Warner Brothers saying... You have your assignment. Yes. <laughs> you have your assignment. Yes. <laughs> you have your assignment. Yes. Okay. Okay. I, I want to get to the piece of trivia I, I'm in the middle of writing my autobiography. And so I was writing, I was looking at some of my old notes and I didn't know about things. And there's a really interesting fact about that being the animated series. The very first episode is On Leather Wings. Very first episode that oh, ever it's and the very first yeah, line of that episode is um, a, a helicopter pilot the only, um, voiced by <laughs> And so the very first line of any Batman episode is voiced by Kevin, but not as that. Which kind of cool. Alright, so it's time for my exercise. Let's get some fan questions. Alright, right here. 